church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe Jesus is God. We're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that prayer moves the hand of God, and it's normal for every believer to be intimate with God and devoted to His cause. At our church, we believe the Bible is God's Word. It's real, it's living, and it's active. We believe freedom is the heart of God for every believer, and we value humor, simplicity, teamwork, and a positive outlook on life. At our church, we're about developing great relationships with God, each other, and those in our community. At our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and will not water down or candy coat that message, ever. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we're not concerned about where you've been, but where you're going. We believe that all people matter to God, and therefore matter to us. Today, you have chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially life-changing message. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our church. church. It was that second song about me. I was Thank you. <laughs> well, we're in Matthew 17 today. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Who sings that? Jefferson song. Well, that's a Jefferson song. I don't know who sang it. We're moving already. Right, whatever you're going. I don't know the rest of it. <laughs> Here we are. And actually, this uh, this is going to be talking a little bit about um, how we can. We kind of got a preview of what we're going to look like when we're moving all this. Yeah, we're moving. <laughs> To start out uh, chapter 17, I think it's wise to go back to 16, the last verse of 16, because if, uh, we all know that um, the chapter divisions was made after the original uh, writings, so man went in and kind of divided the chapters. So sometimes, um, uh, sometimes like this one, it seems like, like we read a book, we got chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and, and when we start a new chapter, we feel like it's starting into another thing. But right here, this all goes together. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So um, I'm going to read the last verse in Matthew 16. Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now Matthew uh, 17, 1 through 3 says, Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Now some have said and reasoned why only those three. And some have said that it was because they probably were the ones that needed most looking at them. But <laughs> that's true of Peter. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't know that that's true. Um, I, for whatever reason, Jesus chose to take uh, those three up with him. Now, the, the mountain that they were going up is not really known for sure. There's been some that have said that it was Mount Tabor, and that was about 9,800 feet high. And then others say it was Mount Moran, and that was about 4,000 feet high. But the closest mountain to where they were at the time was Mount Hermon, or Hermon uh, is how it was pronounced. But it was closest to where they were at, so... I would guess that that would have been the one. But we don't actually know for sure which mountain it was. Mm -hmm. Now Moses and Elisha showed up at this meeting. And they were talking to each other. And I've wondered what they were talking about before, as I'm sure most people have. Why were they there and why? what was Jesus talking with them about? And uh, we don't know that for sure. We don't know what they were discussing, but they were discussing 
I imagine from what happened, what the future events that's going to happen. Now, why Moses and Elijah? Moses, if you know, represented the law. Uh, matter of fact, the Jews used to call it the law, uh, the law of Moses. And really, it wasn't the law of Moses, it was the law of God. But they called it the law of Moses because they, they um, because that's who Moses represented, was the law. And then Elijah, Elijah represented the prophets. Because if you remember, he was a great prophet. He's the one that held back the rain. And then it prophesied that rain was going to come. He's also the one that was carried away in a chariot. So he never did see death. Um, now there's been speculation of whether it was Elijah or Enoch. I've heard people say it might be Enoch, but I, I kind of, the scripture says Moses and Elijah, so mm -hmm. I believe that's why it is. <laughs> um, now Moses, if you remember, he was a great man of God. He gave us the law, but yet he did not see the promised land. That's right. He was held behind because of what? His obedience. His obedience. His actions. See, God had told him to do something, and he didn't do it. Or he, he, he did, did it wrong. Out of anger. He did it wrong. <laughs> he did it out of anger. He did it twice instead of once, I believe. Smoking he, a rock. He, yeah, he struck the rock, and struck that's not what the Lord told him to do. That's not what the Lord told him to do. He was mad. <laughs> He's mad at God, really. We get mad sometimes at God. Yeah, Because um, we want God to do things our way. We get in the flesh. And uh, that's what church people call it. We get in the flesh. And really, it's getting in all of us. You know, we get in our own soul. And we want what we want. And we don't want anybody to tell us we can't have it. Well, um, in Judah. One nine, it talks about where uh, after Moses died, uh, the enemy, Satan, he wanted to come and get Moses' body. Well, what in the world do you want with a dead body? You know, did you ever wonder that? I wondered that. Why did Satan want Moses' body? Well, if you remember in Sodom and Gomorrah, um, they were in all kinds of sexual sin and stuff like that. And I believe that Satan wanted to take Moses' body and degrade it. And God, um, God did not want that done. So he sent Michael the archangel to protect Moses' body. And Michael the archangel said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, he didn't fight him and say, I'm going to take you out. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Uh -huh. You see, he knew enough to know that it was by the power of God that would take care of Satan. So I started wondering, well, you know, Moses' body, God wanted to protect Moses' body. Well, what about us? What about us today? And then that led me into, like, you know, there's a lot of people that don't believe in uh, cremation because they believe that's just... Um, degrading the body and how God wanted it done. And this is, you know, there's nothing in the Bible that talks about cremation being wrong, but this is the only scripture that I can see that I would wonder that if God wanted to protect Moses' body, why wouldn't he want to preserve our body? I mean, you know, not that I disagree either way. I I don't know, but... Um, well, the Lord could protect our ashes, too. That's right. He could bring it back together. In, uh, in uh, Luke Luke 9, it says that they, they appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which is the crucifixion From the, in yeah. Luke. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. From, uh, his, from the cross and him going up. Uh-huh. Um, God had plans for Moses' body. He had plans for it. And I think you can look at us today. He's got plans for our body. He's got plans for our body. You know, when we leave this earth, when we die, 
Our remains stays here. Our shell that we're in stays here. But our spirit goes to heaven with God. We're no longer here. We're with Him. So once Thank we're you. departing <laughs> here, we're with Him. Cool. But, you know, and people come to a funeral and they look at our remains and cast it or whatever, but that is just a shell. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not us. We're no longer there. We're in heaven with God. Now, in Revelation 11, it talks about two witnesses that will come, and one will turn water to blood, and the other will have the power to stop the rain. It sounds an awful lot like Moses and Elijah, doesn't it? And a lot of people, you know, some think it's Enoch, like I said, that's going to be one of the witnesses that come. But I believe it's be Moses and Elijah. And, um, uh, you know how you see, you know how uh, when you're wanting to go to a movie and you see these previews on TV and you see a preview about how funny this movie is going to be and then you're all geared up and you're like, man, I want to go see that. That just looks awesome. So then you go to the movie and you think, huh, the best part was the preview, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> well, this isn't going to be like that. See, when Jesus takes them up on the mountain, and Moses and Elijah come down, and they start talking to Jesus. Something happens to Jesus. He's transfigured. He's transfigured. And in the Greek, this means metamorphosis. Now, what is a metamorphosis? Change. change. It's a change. It's a complete change. It's Incredible. a complete change. From one thing to another, it's not just... You know how a uh, caterpillar, you know, a caterpillar crawls on the dirt, don't they? They crawl in the dirt, then they they climb up this little limb, and then they start spinning what? A cocoon. They spin a cocoon, and then they spend a period of time inside that cocoon. Well, what happens inside that cocoon is this worm that used to crawl in the dirt, us people that live in this world, Amen. that walk on this ground, will be changed. Lord. And we'll be changed in twinkling of an eye. Now, this caterpillar, it's changed into a beautiful butterfly. And this beautiful butterfly, it flies where? In the sky, we call it, but the Bible calls it the lower heaven, the first heaven, yeah. right? Now, I, uh, I started thinking about this and what they witnessed. You know, they witnessed... Jesus changing from Jesus the human to Jesus God, deity. They seen this metamorphosis going on. They seen his glorified body, his glorified self, his awesomeness, his glory. I don't know how to put it. They seen it happen. Now what would you do? If somebody was in front of you and they just started changing form all of a sudden, you know, then they started glowing and, and, and bright lights coming out, we'd all run, wouldn't we? Some people would fall, some people would pass out, some would run. But here's Peter right away, he's like, Lord! He can't just experience the presence. Sometimes we don't know how to rest in God's presence. We think we got to do something. We got to act. We got to move. When God's saying, "Just, just be still, be still, be still and, and just experience the experience." Yeah. Hallelujah. It's like being caught up in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you know. We just feel his presence come on us. And for whatever oh, reason, Lord. we think we got to do something. Just, you know, envelop it. Let him just put his presence on you. Amen. So they got to witness Jesus shedding off the human and putting on the glory. We may live in this world, but we're not part of this world. I mean, we may walk around on this earth and this dirt, but we're not part of this world. 
If we belong to Jesus, we belong to a higher power, his kingdom. They witnessed him coming in his kingdom. That's what that means, verse 28 of 16. There are some standing here right now that I tell you will still be alive and witness my coming. He came in his deity right then at that moment, and they saw it, and they still lived to see it. And they were told not to speak of anything until he resurrected from the dead. We've got to be on fire for God. We can't be lukewarm. You know, some people might call other people a Jesus freak. I'd rather be known as a Jesus freak than someone who just warmed the pew on Sundays. Yep. And said a little, Amen. What about, Amen, brother? Amen. Be the best you can be. If you go to a ball game, and you say the Colts, most people like the Colts around here, and they're like, go, man, go, you get a field. They'll jump up from their seat, and they'll shout, and they'll, they'll, they'll say, yeah, man, nice, nice job. Why can't we do that for God? Yeah, I'll do. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but he's done wonderful, magnificent things in my life. And I was just praising him this morning for that. You know, I think about some of my past stuff I got into, and I was like, thank you, God, for mine. Thank you, Lord, you sent him. Now, there's times that I swear I would divorce the man. But <laughs> I'm just being honest. But I know that I know that I know that God put him and me together. Thank you. If it, he probably saved my life, and I believe God sent him there for a reason. You right. know, I drank a lot, and I'm not afraid to say I drank a lot. I drank a lot. And I wasn't a very good person at all. I got into a lot of things I shouldn't have gotten into. You too? Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, and it's when we confess those things to one another and we hold each other up, that we are actually working the word of God and what Jesus talked about, you know? Love each other. Lift each other up. Hold each other accountable. Confess your faults to one another that you may, may be healed. healed. Amen. Brothers and sisters. And, and see, there's so many people today that don't come up to the altar. Well, if I come up to the altar, your brother and sister's going to wonder what sin I did. Or, or you know, who cares? In the end, when you take your last breath, who do you want to be there with you? The uh, Lord. You want the Lord. You want Him taking your hand and leading you into the other room. Amen? Amen? I mean, I want my family around me too, yeah. But my most important thing when I take my last breath is to know that God is there to lead me into heaven. Amen. Amen. Uh, four through six. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground and were terrified. Peter, right away, he wants he wants to do something. Oh man, this is a glorious time. He recognized that this was a moment. This was a moment that needed to be documented. And he realized that most important thing. But here's one other thing that he did that I thought about that that um, I think could be brought up. He wanted to build three tabernacles yeah. uh, for each one of them. So that meant he put them in the same category, right? Uh -huh. When God was so much higher than the other two. Yes, Moses was a great man. Yes, Elijah was a great man. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ was God. Yeah. Amen. You can't put them in the same in the same category. And, you know, during the, this was all happening during the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Shagat, or Shabbat, how do you say that? Shabbat? 
And uh, the Jewish people, they would gather together and they would build these huts mm -hmm. to remind them as a, as a symbol and a reminder of being out in the wilderness and how they had to rely on God's provision mm -hmm. during that time. So they would build these huts and during that time they would eat in them, they would pray in them, they, they would uh, call out to God and, um, and, and a feast for all people. Uh, during the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, it's unique in that the Gentile nations were invited to join in, to come up to Jerusalem along with the Jewish people to worship God. And, and you know, I, I, got the, I got the feeling that while they were up on this mountain and Jesus was being transfigured, that this was everyone was going to be coming up to him. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you come from, how low you are, uh, how much you're into uh, addiction or wine. or It don't matter. It don't matter. God loves you. Mm -hmm. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're um, uh, <laughs> Greek Jewish, mm -hmm. Gentile, male or female, Maybe. male or female. Maybe. Don't matter. We're all coming together to worship Jesus. Yeah. So many people think today a woman has no right to be behind a pulpit. They think a woman has no right to speak. But God said, where the Spirit is, there's neither male nor female. In heaven, there's neither male nor female. It's Spirit. Amen. I'm a spirit. Inside Amen. me is a spirit, a personality. A, what inside you is a spirit. Whatever makes you tick, that's you. That's you. Amen. Share your turn. Mm -hmm. So they would build makeshift huts. And they, they would remember and celebrate God's uh, provision for them. In verse 5, it says, A voice from heaven. This is my son. Listen to him. Some, some translations say hear him. Mm -hmm. Are we hearing him today? Mm -hmm. Are we listening to him today? You see, he was in his glorified body, his, his um, Shekinah glory, his trans, his metaphor, his transfigured self what we're going to be like when we're in heaven. And he was spirit. Are we hearing him in spirit? That means are we getting in our spirit a place where we can hear from him? You see, it takes time to get there. I mean, we can't just say, Lord, I want to say a prayer for you today. Lord, I pray for this nation. I pray for him and what he's into. Lord, I pray for new beginnings. Lord, I pray for the Lord's table. Touch the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. And then go on your way. Did you get in the spirit? You said your prayers. You said your prayers. But did you get in the spirit? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? There's a place you can get to God where you pray and you pray and you pray through where something's going to happen. And you're going to be enveloped with his presence. And you're at first you're going to think, oh, what is this? Because you know it's supernatural. You see, you need to connect with that spirit. Because if we don't connect to that spirit, we're not hearing him correctly. We're hearing us. Mm -hmm. We're hearing us. Mm -hmm. Boy, us, me, gets me in a lot of trouble. I order things off Amazon. I love Amazon. Oh, my. But Mike says, you got another package. Today, <laughs> <sometimes, by laughs> Mike says, you got another package for him. So, you know, me wants things. Me shouldn't get things all the time. I need to pray and seek the Lord, what his will is. Amen. You, you know you order too much when you get a package. You go, I wonder what that is. Like, you know, I've never had that much to order. Boy, you really wish. Well, this is not the one I was looking for. I never ordered that. Yeah. Yes, I did. Well, this is not the one I was hoping to get today. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I forgot I ordered that. I think I'm still. I'm still. 
Yeah. So, you know. Thank you, Jesus. We all have things we need to work on. Yeah, yeah I'm going to For sure. I don't know entire world. Now, see, I, I want to hear from him. I want to hear from him. This morning as we was worshiping, he showed me a picture of the ark and the, a, a cross right beside the ark in the rain coming. And I thought, what's that mean? You know, because that's already happened. Yeah. Amen? But that rain from the Holy Ghost hasn't happened. That rain that he pours out in the last days that's going to happen right before he comes hasn't happened yet. But it's going to be. And we need to be in the ark. And what is the ark? Jesus. Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen? He's our ark. Right. He's our anchor. He's our rock. He's the one that can keep me sober. He's the one that can keep you from taking pills or heroin or whatever. He's the one that can keep you from lusting after pornography or what, or whatever or, or another woman or another person's wife or whatever. He's the one. But you got to get connected to him. But see, here's the thing. <clears throat> I don't want him. That sin's kind of good. Uh -huh. That sin feels good. That sin looks good. I want that. Mm -hmm. We can't have both. That's right. That's right with fence. We can have both. Uh -huh. Jesus says you gotta pick which way you're gonna go. Mm -hmm. You gotta pick. You gotta choose. When you don't choose, you're you're choosing the enemy's yeah. way. Yeah. You gotta choose. And it doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect. It means you gotta fight for it. Uh -huh. Now, um, Jesus tells them in verse 7, uh, he came to them and he touched them and he said, get up and do not be afraid. He doesn't want us to be afraid of the spirit. He doesn't want us to be afraid. They were afraid when the boy said, he's my beloved son. Listen to him. I imagine that voice was loud and it probably scared them. And they fell on their face because they knew this was a powerful moment. But he doesn't want to be a, he doesn't want us to be afraid of spirit. We've got to hear the spirit. I imagine that happened pretty quickly at the time. Uh, verse 9 through 13. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came, and they did not recognize him but did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't want them to tell anything yet until after he raises from the dead. So that piques a question to why do they ask about Elijah? They're asking because in the scriptures, it always said that he would come first. Well, see, what they just witnessed was Jesus mm -hmm. coming to his kingdom. So they had just witnessed that. Oh, where's Elijah? I thought Elijah was going to come. I thought he was going to come. Where's he at? And Jesus says, he already came. Mm -hmm. He already came, but nobody recognized him. Did anybody recognize Jesus when he came? No. Mm -hmm. Why? They were looking for something on the outside, weren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. They were looking for something on the outside. What do we do when we meet people? We look at what's on the outside, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Look, look yeah. What about what's on the inside? Mm -hmm. How do we know what's on the inside? By actions and words. It's hard for me when I uh, am around people that confess to be a Christian, yet they cuss like a sailor. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's a little bit, uh, you know, I can be a little judgmental, I guess, when it comes to that, because to me, you should be working on your mouth, but, but I don't know what's in their heart. Maybe they take food to so-and-so. Maybe new, they do a lot of good. Christians. They could be new Christians, right. So 
You know, sometimes we've got to let the Holy Spirit do the work. Yeah. But, um, Jesus had already come in the kingdom. And they, they were wondering, and Jesus tells them he already came. Now, we know John the Baptist was the one that they were talking about. John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. He ate locusts and honey. Mm -hmm. He lived in the wilderness. I imagine his hair was all tangled and matted with honey. I, I just imagine he didn't look like a very pretty person. But yet he proclaimed the word of God and boldly and strong that people came to hear him. Yeah. He had the spirit of Elisha. That's what it means he was talking about. He had the spirit of Elisha. Now he may <coughs> not have looked like Elijah on the outside, but he had the spirit of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Now I want to ask you today, can we take on a spirit from a former one that's walked on before us? Mm -hmm. Can we? Amen. Do, don't they pass the torch? <clears throat> Amen. Don't they pass the torch? Aren't they up in heaven as Hebrews talks about a cloud of witnesses Amen. encouraging us to keep on going? Amen. You can do it. More or less on prayer operation, but that's what it means. Elisha passed the torch, torch yeah. to Elisha. Yeah. Yes, he did. That means he won't... That means that the prophets of old, they passed the torch on. Now today, there's many, I believe, that's been passed, but few that want to take it. Yeah. Few that want to take it. They don't want the responsibility and the, uh, and the uh, degree that comes with it when you speak out for God. Change. Mm-hmm. But his yoke is easy and burdens are light. I mean, mm -hmm. they just don't know they're missing. Right. Power of prayer, though, if he knew. But the yoke up with Jesus means that we have to walk his way. That's what we don't want to do. That's right. And uh, Jesus was trying to tell him, like, hey, boys, I'm going to suffer. You know, you know, John the Baptist, his head was served up on a platter to the king. Mm -hmm. He suffered in jail. He suffered. And see, the disciples, they didn't want to hear that, that their king was going to suffer. But after they seen him come in his kingdom, he, they, I think Peter kind of under, I think they got a good reckoning what was going on. And once he explained to them of Elijah, they understood. You know, uh, we talked earlier about, you know, when John the Baptist asked Jesus, are you the one? Wouldn't he know that he was the one that he was uh, you and Dale. Yeah. He wanted assurance. Yeah. You know, uh, even though we know that we know that we know in our knower sometimes that it's God, there's still that part of us, because we're human. We have a human mind, not God's mind. Well, we do have God's mind, but I mean we have a human mind and we doubt. We doubt ourselves, not God. <clears throat> how many times, especially as young Christians, do we do we have the enemy whisper in our ear, you're not really saved. Mm -hmm. oh, Look yeah. at what you just yeah. did. Yeah. And I think it was that instance where the enemy was placing doubt in John's mind. Well, how do you know he's Jesus? How do you know yeah. he's the one? Yeah. You know, because the Maybe devil made a mistake. The devil has no power except the power of suggestion mm -hmm. and the power that we give to him. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he doesn't hold power over us unless we give it to him. He's just real the God heals. Mm -hmm. I think verse 7 says, don't be afraid means that a lot of times people get saved and then they're afraid they're going to have to change. And God's the one that changes us. We don't change. But exactly. God changes us. And that's, that's scary. Changes mm -hmm. in our life. It is, and, and it all fits with the transfiguration. Uh -huh. You know, we are changed little by little each and every day uh -huh. if we seek God first. If we get up in the morning and we ask the Lord to guide us today, and, you know, that should be our thought every morning when we get up is, Lord, you know, guide me today, help me do the right thing, um, help me help others. Um, but how many times do we just get up and go about our day? 
watch the news first or whatever. I mean, um, we need to ask the Lord to help us each day. As, as we're sitting here talking about this change thing, I think about that caterpillar that turns into a butterfly and how that caterpillar weaves his own cocoon around himself. And the more he weaves, the more that cocoon becomes darker and darker. And he doesn't, the minute that he gets done weaving that cocoon around himself, he doesn't immediately turn into a butterfly. There's a period of waiting in the darkness. That's right. And then he bursts forth as a new creature. And sometimes God wraps us up in his love, and we wait in that darkness for the change that seems like it's never, ever, ever going to come. And we wait for a long time, and then all of a sudden we get a revelation of who Christ is in our life, and we break forth a new creature, not because of something we've done, but because of something he's done inside of us in the dark. Mm -hmm. In our and, heart. You know, only God can come into a man's heart and touch his heart and change mm -hmm. Only God can do that. And, and only you, like when you get saved and you ask the Lord in, only you know what experience you had with him. But you know it was supernatural. You know it was from somewhere else besides what you could do on your own. So you know it's there. And he's the only one that can change your heart. Right? And he, he always starts from the inside and works out, and that's why... Our outward appearance sometimes doesn't look like we're Christians. Mm -hmm. we're See, Christians. I used to have a mouth on me. Yeah. I could cuss like a sailor. Uh -huh. And uh, God just took that away. Yeah. Um, kind of like I, old, I like the old man is dead. He still looks the same on the outside. Yeah. He dresses the same, but he's not the same inside. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Listen to this in Second Peter. Second uh, Peter uh, 1. 16 through 21 says, For we did not follow cleverly devised tales uh, when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, his majesty, his glory. I have no idea what that looked like, but I can imagine that was something. Their eyes were able to still lay upon that and not burn up. Um, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such as utterance as this was made to him by the majest, majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased. And we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic word made more sure to which you dwell to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. The dark place goes right along with what you were talking about, Barb. Until the day dawns, the revelation, and the morning star, Jesus Christ, shines in your heart. Um, but know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture, scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. When we allow our spirit to be moved by the Holy Spirit, then God will speak to us. Amen. Amen. And that takes speaking his faith. A deeper walk with him. Study the word. Um, you know, it's okay to read the word. I want everybody to read some of the word every day. But study it. It's amazing the life that will birth in in you yourself. You'll feel more energetic. You'll feel. I mean, it's just. It's like medicine to your soul or medicine to your spirit. But let's close. Does anybody have anything else you want to say? Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we thank you that your sweet spirit was here and that you let us know you love us. Lord, we ask that we follow in your word, that you lead us and guide us, Lord, with your love, and that you bring us back once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you. The word works when you work it. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.
All right, family, two. See you later. Have a good one. You guys have a good day. Thank you. you too. I think I'm going to have to pay someone to come and look at it.